just gave his initial teaching, uh, introductory talk, and now we are making the mandala offering. By the sound of the great Dharma, drum of Dharma, may you set suffering, sentient beings free. Please teach us Dharma and live for inconceivable tens of millions of years. Oh. Like. <laughs> So today, uh, as Lama Rinpoche has requested to teach uh, the text Recognizing My Mother, an experiential song of the view, and I also accepted the uh, request very uh, happily. And so we have decided to have the teaching on it. So first of all, with regard to the term Song of the View, the view here refers to the view of dependent origination or dependent arising and as i usually talk about these two principles the philosophical view of dependent arising and conduct ethical uh, practice of not harming others and so the, uh, these are related to the world at large and uh, uh, the that of the ethical conduct or non-harming or non-violence has to do with world peace and here the so with regard to the authenticity of the lineage of the teaching the buddha first uh, after enlightenment said that uh, he has found this or discovered this uh, profound uh, nectar-like uh, uh, teaching or dharma which is profound peaceful and so forth and uh, even if he were to teach others nobody will understand him and therefore he will not uh, give teachings uh, but remain in the forest uh, in silence so it seems that this uh, uh, first verse that he uttered after enlightenment seems to uh, have, uh, in a way, um, captured what he was going to teach later, the three turnings of the wheel of dharma. And so the first t turning of the wheel of dharma is the uh, on the Four Noble Truths, the, in which he taught this is the true suffering, this is the origin of true suffering, and this is the true cessation, this is the true path. So uh, in this way, he uh, identified the Four Noble Truths. And then, how do we go about with uh, getting rid of uh, the first two and attaining the latter two? And therefore, the Buddha said, uh, the suffering must be known, so origin must be eliminated, cessation, true cessation must be uh, actualized, uh, uh, actualized, and then the path must be cultivated. And therefore, with regard to uh, uh, overcoming suffering, if, even down to the small uh, creatures like insects that do not want any suffering. And therefore, if we do not want suffering, what the Buddha has taught is that we need, we must get rid of its course, which is the origin of suffering. And so the uh, origin comprise the two, which are the karma and mental afflictions. Is it, is it possible to overcome these two or not? And therefore the Buddha went on with the third uh, statement with regard to the Four Noble Truths. He says the suffering must be overcome, but there's not nothing to overcome. Uh, the, uh, 
uh, origin. The suffering must be known, but nothing to be known. Uh, origin must be overcome, nothing to be overcome. And so forth. So, in the ultimate sense, the, the, the suffering, uh, to overcoming suffering and so, um, the uh, understanding suffering and so forth uh, cannot be done. And therefore, the Buddha taught true cessation by understanding how things have no in ultimate or intrinsic existence, you attain that of the cessation. And therefore, in order to attain the cessation, you need to cultivate the path. And therefore, the Buddha said, there is no... So in order to understand the... Whether the, uh, the true cessation can be attained or not, you need to check whether, these, um, whether the suffering and its origin can be overcome or not, and whether the, uh, the afflictions, defilements can uh, do have uh, the... Um, uh, powerful antidotes to them or not. And therefore, Chandra Kirti says, in his Madhyamaka Avatara, the the third last uh, verse of the sixth chapter, uh, where he says the uh, and then Nagarjuna says in, in the 400 verses of Arya Deva he says just as the physical faculty permeates all other fac uh, faculties likewise the ignorance permeates all other mental afflictions and uh, this is, can be overcome by understanding a dependent origination of things. And therefore, anyone and, um, who wish to uh, uh, understand the teaching of the Buddha must be taught the dependent origination first, right, and at the outset. So what we need to understand is whether the defilements and suffering that it causes, uh, the uh, cause uh, can be overcome or not. So, the root of, since the root of all our karmas and afflictive mental afflictions are, uh, is that of ignorance, as I quoted the 400 verses, and therefore the um, as Chandrakirti, I quoted Chandrakirti, what he does, what Master Chandrakirti does is that uh, of uh, demonstrating through reason and logic. Because merely uh, resorting to scripture may, may not give you uh, any conviction, very strong and, uh, conviction, but through reason uh, one can uh, gain conviction in the uh, uh, truth that these defilements uh, in our minds are um, only temporary, adventitious, and the root of all these mental afflictions is ignorance or confusion and which can be overcome through the understanding of selflessness. And therefore, when you understand that, then um, you can see the uh, possibility of attaining true cessation. And then after that verse that I quoted earlier from the sixth chapter, the third last verse, and then the second last uh, um, uh, verse from the sixth chapter, uh, and then in the beginning, 
the uh, Master Chantakirti makes salutation to compassion and coupling it with, combining it with the uh, view of emptiness. And then at the end of the sixth, cham- sixth chapter, the, the Master Chantakirti says that uh, the Bodhisattva with the two wings of both ultimate uh, view and ultimate uh, 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 wisdom of the ultimate truth and the conventional truth um, uh, flies across to the farther shore of the ocean of samsara and therefore with these two, the wisdom and um, methods complementing each other, then you will be able to reach um, the Buddhahood um, where you, uh, at which stage you would have um, overcome all the defilements in one's mind, from within one's mind stream, both the mental afflictions and the cognitive obscurations. And then in the sixth chapter, and then in the sixth chapter, there are these four uh, logical um, absurdities that are set against the those who at, uh, uh, assert that things have some self-characterized uh, existence. So verse number uh, 34 uh, to 36 of the uh, chapter 6 of Madhyamaka Avatara sets forth these four logical absurdities, saying that the conventional um, truth would be um, able to withstand logical analysis um, and that the... So uh, things do not, that things would be destroyed by the Arya beings, um, direct insight into emptiness. And that things are merely uh, imputed by way of, designated by way of our uh, names and labels. And so this is very similar to quantum physics. And then the third absurdity is that the ultimate uh, existence cannot be rejected or refuted. And that the Buddha, and the fourth is that the Buddha, having taught that things are uh, devoid of their own self existence. Um, would not be, uh, would not hold true. So the, uh, the last uh, verses of the sixth chapter of Madhyamaka Avatara is, are very powerful uh, summaries of um, Madhyamaka Avatara. And so I recite the verses uh, from chapter 6, verses 34 down, and then uh, uh, reflect on how things do not have any, uh, any intrinsic inherent existence. And so here the view refers to the Madhyamaka view, the middle way view. So first, in order to understand this, you need to first develop an understanding based on hearing the teaching and a teaching from a teacher. And then whatever you have heard, you need to reflect on it again and again. 
so uh, Madhyamaka uh, Avatara, Madhyamaka Avatara, the uh, Prasanapada and the 400 verses of Aryadeva are very uh, important texts for understanding the Madhyamaka view. And so in order to understand the Madhyamaka view well, you need to be also able to distinguish between the Savatantrika and the uh, the, the Prasankika uh, views. And so having heard the teaching on emptiness, you need to reflect on it. And so when you reflect on the I, yourself, as the Madhyamaka, Mula Madhyamaka Avatara says, uh, the Tathagata is neither the aggregates nor desisting from the aggregates, the Tathagata is not based on the aggregates, nor the uh, aggregates on him. The Tathagata does not possess the aggregates. What else is the Tathagata? And so I use this verse to refer to myself, um, that I am not the aggregates. I am not distinct from the aggregates. You cannot, I cannot possess a distinct self from the aggregates. And then the things like body and so forth are seen, usually perceived as um, the mind. And so what else is the Tagata? What else, uh, what else am I? Who else am I? You come to that question. And then for, therefore, when you do this kind of analysis, trying to pinpoint who you are and um, analyzing yourself within the aggregates uh, or separate from the aggregates and so forth, you will not be able to find anything as being yourself. And therefore, by default, what you come uh, to, uh, to conclusion is that you are merely designated. Whereas this ignorance holding on to uh, some... Um, as an identity of a self, an absolute self, an, on, uh, that cannot be found. And so when you, when you analyze this self, which is held by the ignorance, you will not be able to find anything being yourself. And therefore, you come to the conclusion by default that you are nothing other than being designated being. And therefore, the, with regards to emptiness, it is a mere negation of an absolute self. As Benjamin Lobsang Chögen has said, sometimes I read these verses, which I have no, uh, made notes of, uh, in his dialogue between uh, the uh, grasping at true self and the wisdom of uh, selflessness or emptiness. So understanding emptiness is very important for your uh, practice as well. And then the, uh, it is like the cream of the teaching of the Buddha. Uh, in the Jai uh, Tsongkhapa's uh, praise to uh, praise to the Buddha for teaching dependent origination, he says, "I am someone who follows the Buddha, a monk, and um, and I am someone who has not done um, who is not poor in learning and so forth." This verse. So I've become a monk in the teaching, following the teaching of the Buddha. Me too. So I received the uh, novice ordination. So in front of the uh, Lhasa, uh, the Joa statue, I received the novice, the Upasaka novice vows. And so I received the uh, Gelong vow from uh, Ling Rinpoche, my abbot, preceptor. 
And after I became a Gelong Bhikshu, I, uh, I, and particularly after I became an exile, though I did study the, the um, Perfection of Wisdom uh, texts and others, I particularly studied the uh, Madhyamaka texts by Master Chan, uh, Tsongkhapa, the five major texts on Madhyamaka, which are the commentaries to Mule Madhyamaka Karika, uh, Madhyamaka Avatara, and then the uh, Lekshe Nyingpo, the true, uh, essence of uh, eloquence, and then um, the two insight sections of Lamrim Chemo and the, uh, the in, um, middling stage of uh, the stages of the path. And so I have some kind of a, um, a, a hope that I would be able to uh, reach a somewhat uh, simulated experience of um, the true cessation. And so, regarding the Madhyamaka view of emptiness, first, I re received teaching on it and understood it on the basis of that, gained some understanding, and then gained understanding through reflection on it, and then uh, familiarized myself with this view of emptiness, even in my dreams. So, uh, of course, it may not be, uh, I may not be able to reach or uh, have the true experience of a, made, uh, uh, a meditative uh, experience of it, the view of emptiness, but I would be, uh, I have some experience of it. And so, if you receive, if you go over this text like this on the view of emptiness, it would be a, a, a helpful to remind yourself of the view of emptiness. And Jetson Kappa also says that uh, the Four Noble Truths, the, uh, the Four Noble Truths were taught by the Buddha in all the, his teachings from the, uh, the, the, um, the basic vehicle up to the Madhyamak, um, uh, the greater vehicle teachings. Um, so for the stages of the path to enlightenment, Madhyamaka view becomes very important, it's crucial. So it would be helpful to read Benjen Lobsan Chögen's dialogue between the ignorance and uh, the, the wisdom of emptiness. Uh, so with regard to this text, the recognizing my mother and an experiential view of the uh, song of the view, I received an uh, explanatory uh, transmission from Yongzin, my the tutor, Ling Rinpoche, and, and also Kensur Tempa Tenzing of Debung um, Monastery. So I will give a... So you who reveal, bear the wonder of dependent origination, dependent rising nature, oh my guru, your kindness is boundless indeed. Kindly recite in my heart as I utter these spontaneous words from th what's flickering through the mind. This lunatic child who lost his old mother long ago is about to realize by chance what he has not recognized. She has been with him all along. And so here the mother refers to the view of emptiness. And so with regard to that, Dependent origination becomes the basis of both samsara and nirvana. 
And so here the, the old mother is used as an analogy for the emptiness. She, has, she is perhaps that is and is not quietly spoken by my brother, Stephen Rising. So since I am merely designated, therefore it is uh, empty of any intrinsic existence. So when, uh, when you say this form is empty, it may not give any sense to you, make any sense, but when you say, when you are said that, told that the form is dependently arisen, it has some impact on you. But my undeceiving mother, you have betrayed me. While I hope to be saved by my mother, dependent by my brother, dependent rising, it is ultimately in your kindness alone, O oh mother, that my hopes for freedom lie. So since things do not exist the way ignorance uh, conceives it to uh, to be, um, therefore there is always hope for us to understand the uh, actual reality of things. If, if the duality of subject and object is as it seems to be, then not even the Buddhas of the three times can save us. So this duality of subject object is because of our clinging to the, the clinging ignorance at true existence. And if things were to exist the way this ignorance clings on to, then the Buddhas three of the three times cannot of, uh, save us <clears throat> because it cannot, we cannot reach Buddhahood. But this ever-shifting spectacle is in truth my changeless uh, mother's expressions. Hence, there is indeed a way out, freedom. This inexpressible mother of mine, not existing in any form, he appears in all forms. So this shows emptiness and dependent origi origination. In this mutual dependence of emptiness and form alone is an important sense indeed, or lesson. <laughs> not finding my father when sought is in fact finding my mother. So the father here refers to the object which you investigate, on which the emptiness of it is established. So not finding my father when sought is in fact finding my mother. My father is found in my mother's lap. So all these diverse things, pure and impure objects, are manifestations of the emptiness, and therefore the all actions, agents, and so forth are the manifestation or man emanation of this emptiness, and which is says here in my mother's lap. So that, that's how these kind parents save their child. I'm told. Evidently. My mother's face, which is neither one nor multiple, appears ungraspably in my mother's brother's mirror, yet a lunatic like me has not the slightest clue. So this is uh, showing humility. And Nagarjuna and Chandrakirti, Nagarjuna's the uh, sixth text of collection, and particularly the Madhyamaka, uh, the Madhyamaka Karika, the, the fundamental treatise of the Middle Way, which is very important, very precious, where it says what is dependently arisen is said to be empty, and that is mid, uh, the designated, and that is the Middle Way. So this is a very um, powerful statement by Master Nagarjuna. And then uh, amongst his commentators, Commentaries on the Madhyamaka, um, Madhyamaka Avatara, there is the uh, Chandrakirti's um, Madhyamaka Avatara and its auto-commentary, 
as well as Parisanapada, which are very important. So I read the uh, auto commentary to Madhyamika Avatara the, by Master, Nag uh, Master Chandrakirti, which is uh, very helpful. So, of course, it is very important to, uh, um, the, to do the practice of reliance on the Guru, but this text uh, by Chantakete does not say that. <clears throat> and towards the end of Madhyamaka Avatara, Master Chantakete says, even if someone may be very learned, but without some imprint from the past, they will not be able to understand this profound emptiness. And so does masters like Vasubandhu and uh, Jamadignaka and so forth. And, uh, have they abandoned this teaching on emptiness, profound emptiness or not? He asked, and he says, yes, they have. <laughs> So Nagarjuna and Chandrakirti set their instructions upon the wind, and Manjushri Garba, which is Jerembuche, Jetsongkapa, his writings like the Avatar commentary and Madhyamaka Avatar's commentary, um, and then the uh, true essence of true eloquence and the inside section of great stages of the path and the inside section of the middling stages of the path. And so Teokyabun Rambuche once used to say that if you study these five texts well, uh, then you will not be able to, you will not um, find yourself overwhelmed by suffering and so forth. So, so I hope to see my ever-present old mother without the hardship of a uh, searching or uh, prolonged search. So when you talk about emptiness, you cannot, you need to actually be able to find it within yourself that it, it's merely. So this shows that this uh, uh, searching for and seeking for the understanding of emptiness must be done within yourself. <clears throat> there seem to be some among our own scholars of today caught in the web of words like thoroughly withstanding or true existence. So without touching the <clears throat> the um, conventionally existent thing, and these scholars seem to actually be uh, talking about some um, uh, object of negation, uh, they, they who seek only to negate some creature with four horns, while leaving intact this everyday appearance of solidity. So when you understand that things are merely designated, when you actually understand that well, then uh, and then check how things ex appear to you, you'll be able to see that they appear as if they have some objective existence. And therefore, this everyday appearance, if, thing, if things were to exist the way they appear, as Madhyamaka Avatar says, that things cannot be found when you analyze and search for their identity and the end, whereas we are not able to understand that way of existence of things, that they are merely designated. But we. So, verse number 10, so who seek only to negate some creature with horns while leaving intact this everyday appearance of reality, solidity. So, uh, 
So, of course, there are philosophical schools which also say that things must have some objective existence in themselves, without which we cannot talk about a cognition, a valid cognition and its object. But such vivid duality is not found on my mother's unveiled face, I believe, from the protracted discussion missing the point. My old mother is liable to flee. Things of course exist, but not in this way of stark facts rendered into dichotomies. So of course things do exist, but they exist by way of designation. Apart from that, they do not exist, for the inseparable bond of our loving parents is more one of tenderness and joy, and therefore emptiness and dependent origination are of the, the uh, same uh, the two sides of the coin, as we say. So in the three principal aspects of the path, Master Tsongkhapa says, appearance dispels the extreme of it, uh, a permanence or existence, and the emptiness that dispels the extreme of nihilism. So of course things are merely Things merely appear, there's mere appearance, and therefore the extreme of existence, eternalism is dispelled. And therefore, since things are, <coughs> since they exist not by way of their own true existence, and therefore they, are, they lack any true existence, and they do not exist objectively, but they are de merely designated, and therefore emptiness does away with the um, extreme of nihilism. <clears throat> Twelve, again, Things, of course, exist, but not in this way of stark facts rendered into dichotomies for the inseparable bonds of our loving parents is more one of tenderness and joy. So if, of course, things are empty of in inherent existence, then you, we can say emptiness and dependent origination go together, whereas if things were to exist the way they appear to us, as if they have some absolute existence, then they cannot do, um, uh, go together. Why Bashikas, Satantikas, Vajanavadas, and the three Eastern Masters, through, though they label this mother is limestone like white elephant with names so divergent and so forth. So the Madhyamakas, Savatantrika Madhyamakas uh, are not able to explain or posit dependent origination um, um, precisely. So yet they all seem to have lost this old mother. Likewise, many scholars and meditators amid Sakya, Nyingma, Kadyu, Karma, and Dukpa pride themselves on their diverse terminology, reflexive awareness, subject free, empty, and luminous. So I have received teaching on the Lamde, the path and the fruit. Uh, uh -huh. of the Sakya tradition, where they talk about Seltong Zinme, which means the uh, luminous, empty, and subject-free. So this reflexive awareness. So the union of clarity and Emptiness. So these are not only talking about emptiness as taught in emptiness, uh, the, the Sutra uh, Yana, but these are also a um, reference to the, um, the clay light mind which manifests when the um, 
when we uh, dissolve, go through the dissolution process, and all these uh, three uh, visions are um, uh, dissolved into this clear light. And so that mind is used to uh, uh, realize emptiness in the tantric uh, teaching, which are um, taught also in the Sakya, Nyingma, and Kagyu traditions. So, so primordial purity and spontaneity, Samanda Bhattas, true face. Mahamudra, also the uncontrived innate nature. So these are all re reference uh, uh, to the, this, the, subtle, sub the subtlest clear light mind uh, taught in the highest yoga tantra. Neither is nor is not devoid of any standpoint. This is all splendid if the target is hit. But I wonder what you are all pointing at. External matter is not dismantled. We are bashikas and bashikas. Worry not and be pleased. Though not refle no reflexivity, cognition and cognizer are tenable. All Vijanavadas do ple be pleased. Intrinsic nature's absence, dependent arising, remains stark. O oh, three Eastern Masters, please be, uh, be pleased as well. With no conflict, clarity and emptiness can be upheld. Holders of people instruction lineage, be not apprehensive. Though pure, primordially, good and bad are feasible, you Vidyadara yogis need not grasp that purity. Since the innate nature can dawn through even contrived meditation, your elderly meditators <clears throat> need not be persistent or insistent, since one can uphold the absence of elaboration of existence and non-existence. You stubborn logicians need not fret. This may not have... If, this may not all have evolved from not knowing the proper use of conventions by some wanting in irradiation. I mean no disrespect to you. Do forgive me if I cause conference, offense. No, I'm not among the omniscient brats. I do possess <clears throat> expertise in riding the well-bred horse of my ancestors' work, so I hope to traverse and challenging the challenging passages through constant and dedicated striving. No search is required, for seeker is the sort. Never grasp at the truth, for it is false. Yet shun not this falsity, for it is the truth. And we can suggest in this that is neither nothing nor absolute. Though I may not see my mother directly, I feel I've just found my kind lost long, par long lost parents through hearing the mere names. They are as if right here beside me. Great indeed is the kindness of Guru Nagarjuna and his heirs. Great indeed is the kindness of Gosan Dagba. Great indeed is the kindness of my guru to repay their kindness. I will honor my mother. <clears throat> Though the joyous celebration of the noble deeds through the uh, through the noble joyous celebration of noble deeds through the meeting of the young child in awareness with his mother with his unborn express by aging mother may i may all mother sentient beings be let of lasting joy uh robert Durge performed here and that now a dance of ecstatic joy and worship the three jewels and then the colophon so i usually read uh, the uh, dialogue between ignorance or um, grasping at true existence as <clears throat> with this text. So these are verses from the Benjamin Lawson Chuygen's text that His Holiness is reading. So, uh, so, of course, I have made uh, notes of these lines from the text, uh, which is the uh, Benjamin Lobson Chuygen's text. So, with this, we have finished, we are, we are done with the teaching on the recognizing the mother, my mother, uh, an experimental song of the view. So I have received these teachings from Ningning Rinpoche. 
And I do reflect on these teachings regularly. Your Holiness, thank you so much. I would like to now welcome Lama Zopa Rinpoche back to give his conclusion and dedications for the teachings today. Thank you. So, Lama Zopa Rinpoche, we have known each other we are trusted friends, and your teacher, Gain, uh, Lama Tabdin Ishi, and you, you have founded many Dharma centers in order to help, to the best of your ability, many people. So, I really appreciate your work. So while Lama Tupten Yishi was alive, you did, both of you did well. And after Lama Tupten Yishi passed away, Lama Zabaran Boche, you have also been doing your best. I would like to thank you and please continue to do your best. Feel determined to continue your efforts and thank you. So, Lama Zabaran Boche has, of course, done your service to the Dharma in general. And the specific traditions Whatever you have done cannot be obliterated. So you are giving advice to people, whether they are believers or not. What you do to help others is very good. So thank you, and Tashi Delek.